just yes see. we are on live yeah sir we are on live okay 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 we will proceed yeah sure uh, a very good morning to all uh, it is our great pleasure to have you all for the knowledge 4.0 webinar series which is one of the unique initiative of our uh, chairman mr p st ram chennai institute of technology a successful first generation entrepreneur a well known industrialist managing director of mk group of companies under knowledge 4.0 series we have been conducting webinar series such as technical webinar series research webinar series career guidance webinar series and innovation webinar series today we have a technical webinar series on industry 4.0 on the perspective of die casting industries so we had a lot many industry 4.0 webinars but this webinar is exclusively look into uh, in terms of a die casting industries so we have mr kedar vaidya head of advanced materials from bolor group india private limited welcome you sir thank you thank you and Mr. Dinesh Kumar, the team leader in sales, Bula Group, India Private Limited. Welcome, you sir. Thank you. Yes, um, Chennai Institute of Technology was established in 2010 by our Honorable Chairman, Mr. P. C. Ram. Now our institute is being within top 10 institute among the private engineering colleges in Tamil Nadu. And you all know the you no know, kind of center of excellence is the industry connect what the college has as a tremendous. and a few words about the guest uh, mr kedar vaidya completed his bachelor's in kusro vidya institute of technology and post graduate diploma from alliance university and he holds a degree in iim bangalore also previous to joining buller he has been associated with jaya hind industries limited and bulo enterprises limited cabio pinnacle private limited so he joined in buller in 2014 almost for more than 7 years he has been with uh, buller india and currently he is heading the advanced material division in buller india private limited thank you sir thank you a few words about mr dinesh dinesh completed his bachelor's in mechanical engineering from anna university previous to buller he was with technomac rane day casting limited and ask automotive he has been associated with buller almost for 6 uh, years he has totally around um 10 more than 10 years of experience in this same die casting field welcome you mr dinesh thank you so uh, um, participants it's going to be a interesting industry 4.0 session uh, in terms of die casting uh, industry perspective um we have two excellent uh, eminent guests from buller um we welcome you and over, over to you mr dinesh yeah i'll start professor uh, good morning students this is uh, kedar vaidya and as uh, professor mentioned that uh, i belong to a business uh, or i take or uh, take care of business which is advanced materials which is a non food business of uh, builder and die casting is uh, part uh, part of that business so uh, just uh, just to brief you something about uh, builder Uh, as you can see into the picture every day there are billions of people who come in contact with us uh, buller today feeds almost 2 billion people every day and we are moving around 1 billion people every day across the globe so what are the products you see from buller here is uh, as you see the mobile so we have a lens uh, which is coated with the buller uh, equipment the glass the coaters is used from buller then uh, you have cereals breakfast which is uh, are manufactured on bureau machines you have lipstick chemicals uh, powder uh, dry chemical or weight grinding which is done on bureau machines we have pet food uh, uh, machines like uh, uh, machines manufacturing pet food we have coffee roasters uh, we also have rice mills across india we where we can uh, completely have a solution from paddy to sorting uh, you might have seen uh, sortex as a brand uh, name on readymade rice bags 
and that Sortex is a Bueller brand, but it's like just uh, what we call a Xerox. So actually, it's a photocopying process, but uh, it's a sorting process. But since Sortex is Bueller brand, everybody uses it as Sortex. We also have uh, biscuit wafers for the ice creams. Prominently, if you have uh, seen this Kit Kat Cadbury, the inside uh, wafer is made on Bueller machines. We have machines that are manufacturing pasta. We have, uh, as you can see, automotive industry. We have uh, die casting. We have a business called 3D, wherein the coating, the inside reflector of the lights is made on Bueller machines. As also we have uh, malting, so dry malting is uh, part of uh, Bueller business. So this is just a brief about Bueller, wherein we are there into almost all the businesses. It's a 3.5 billion uh, Swiss franc company or US dollar company with around 11,500 employees across the globe. Here in India, we have around 1,000 people. We have a factory set up in Attivele, which is just border of uh, Tamil Nadu near Hosur. Where predominantly we supply uh, rice equipments uh, globally, and we also have coffee roasters uh, for the supply across the world. So for Bueller die casting, we have a global support. Uh, we are in the market for the market uh, with a customer proximity for more than 90 plus years in uh, in the die casting industry. We have three hubs with uh, production, service, and application facilities. The headquarters is in uh, Bueller Uzville, which is in Switzerland, which is around 45 minutes drive from Z uh, Zurich, where we have the entire uh, headquarters there. And die casting machines are also manufactured in uh, Bueller Uzville. We have one plant in Bueller Pins, which is in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is also I think half an hour or one hour drive from the airport. And we have one factory in Wuxi where we manufacture the lower tonnage machines called as the Ecoline machines in Bula Wuxi, which is around three, three hours uh, drive from Shanghai. We also have one application center here in uh, Bula Bangalore where we have one Ecoline 84 machine where we call customers for trials. We call uh, customers for training. So we give some implant trainings here. We are 200 plus uh, service people globally and 20 local people in our regions. In India, we have eight service engineers, two, two engineers in Chennai. We have four application centers with over 30 application te uh, technologists, trainers and die designers across the world. We also have a spare part supports here from India and almost 20,000 different parts out of which 82% parts are shipped on the same day. Next slide. Yeah, so I hand over to Dinesh and Dinesh will explain how we are looking into Bueller uh, for the I IoT 4.0. Good morning. I'm Dinesh Kumar and a warm welcome to all of you. It's a nice uh, event uh, webinar on industry 4.0 through knowledge 4.0 by CIT and uh, today we will be uh, presenting about uh, the industry 4.0 uh, and uh, uh, die casting um, foundry or the industries uh, you can see right now a uh, lot of uh, emerging technologies are coming it's more of uh, digitalization in every field and every industry Likewise, die casting industry also, we have a lot of digitalization process. And uh, with that, uh, we try to ease the, the challenges what we have it. Maybe we will uh, discuss in detail about uh, Industry 4.0 as well as uh, the IoT, Internet of Things with uh, AI, Artificial Intelligence. So Industry 4.0 is already um, in place at many, many uh, foundries and many industries. In die casting, uh, there are a lot of uh, companies coming up with uh, Industry 4.0. And uh, there is no Industry 4.0 without IoT support. So we have to merge these two together in, in die casting industry as well. And uh, in IoT, we have lot of, um, a lot of uh, divisions like uh, predictive analysis for the machine as well as for the wholesale and uh, self-learning for the, the machine, the complete machine. 
and then we in the industry 4.0 we we can categorize into the the cell management the complete cell because the machine is not only just the machine but uh, it is comprises with uh, with a lot of uh, peripherals into it so we call the 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 whole uh, cell it's it's a die casting cell it's it's not only just the die casting machine and then we have augmented reality we have virtual realities these are all um, adding values to the the industry 4.0 and adding values to the um, to the cell and uh, you can see what are the challenges right now we are facing in die casting industry are are uh, quite a large amount like uh, we have uh, we have to focus more on the productivity we have to focus more on the the oe we have to uh, see how to trace the parts we have to see how to uh, get the data from the machine as well as from the part we have to see the the availability of the machine because uh, machine is like once it's down then even in the cell any any of the peripheral is down the whole cell is down so we have to see the availability at the higher extent we have to see the energy consumption energy is uh, getting expensive day by day so we have to see how the energy consumption is doing, going to be and we have to focus more on the the competitiveness with uh, with the industries other industries also like uh, plastics composites carbon fibers etc so uh, to overcome these challenges how are we going to um, do it with with the help of uh, iot and industry 4.0 is what we are going to see see this is how uh, a cell looks like maybe you can see um, this is the machine we, uh, this is the dcm this die casting machine and then there are a lot of peripherals around the machine you can see um, the robo here rob is a robo that is a robo number 2 and we have a quenching tank we have a trim press and we have a marking station we have um, sprayer we have the the dosing furnace we have the temperature controllers so these are all the peripherals which add um, values to the the die casting machine and uh, to to extract the casting out of a cell with a more finished product we need all these peripherals and uh, right now you can see all the red lines around these are all the routes of an operator roaming uh, around the machine see the uh, the conventional cell right now with a uh, lot of uh, user interfaces to the peripherals there are lot many panels around the machine for each and every peripheral there is a, a control panel there is a touch screen there is a interface human machine interface and the operator has to move around for any any of the program change any of the um, uh, alarm reset uh, so, so the the fatigue is there for the operator and also uh, the time taken to resolve is also high so to overcome this we have to uh, see a uh, lot of uh, work has to be done in a cell and also we had a challenge that uh, it's not only one interface to have uh, to have all the cell uh, peripherals connected we had multiple interfaces for instance with the machine to the robo it could be a digital interface it could be a profibus interface it could be a, a profinet interface and uh, from a robo to a trim press or a quenching tank or to marking station there are a lot of uh, other interfaces also like serial interfaces serial protocols and so on so we have to uh, see what are all the possibilities to overcome these uh, differences so to overcome this we have introduced like uh, buller has introduced uh, a smart cell management uh, we call it as uh, smart cms and uh, with smart cms we have a centralized uh, computer i would say uh, a cell management system and this controls and this is the master and this controls the whole cell so even the machine will be a slave to this controller and then we have all the peripherals into it and this can be connected to uh, your uh, your computer uh, it can also be connected to your uh, your personal devices like uh, your tabs pads or your even your mobiles and uh, with this uh, smart cms we overcome the operator uh, roaming around to to reset or to reprogram or to uh, do any activities in the peripherals 
and with that we can um, reduce and it's now you can see in this uh, it's it's a centralized uh, user interface and th with this uh, centralized user interface uh, it eases the operation so whenever there is a, a problem uh, operator can go directly to that computer and then he can find out okay where is the problem in which peripheral has a problem and then he can reset it and um, there are the challenges um, not Bueller manufactures all the peripherals. So we manufacture only the machine. Likewise, all our competitors uh, not manufacture all the peripherals. For instance, Robo. Robo, there are uh, manufacturing companies uh, like uh, ABB, KUKA, Fanuk. Uh, they manufacture the robots only. And uh, we have to deal with them in a cell. So we have to work with them for the interfaces. We have to work with them for the data transfers. We have to work with them for the, the even uh, for, for example, if you want to reset an alarm, which is in the robo panel, and uh, you, you need to, uh, instead of going to the robo panel, if you want to reset that in a, on a centralized computer, then we need to discuss with them a lot. And they, they should be able to, um, um, I would say, transfer the data and allow uh, the machine manufacturer to uh, accept it or or to access the their data so there were a lot of challenges in the past when we uh, started this project uh, of smart cms and we have overcome with uh, with a lot of uh, the the advancements uh, even with our uh, peripheral suppliers for instance in um, robo we we did it with um, abb and uh, for for example, in um, dosing furnace, uh, stricovestofen, in trim, um, in spraying unit, uh, woolen, and uh, uh, dye temperature controllers, regloplast, these were the companies which came forward to support us, and they 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 were uh, they were open enough to share their information, uh, their uh, machine information, so that we work in a single platform, and this helped a lot in developing smart CMS. And now uh, with smart CMS, you can uh, operate all the, the peripherals in one computer. And this is how it looks like the smart CMS. Um, like if, if you are aware of a die casting system, um, many might have uh, seen a die casting machine and uh, how the, the controller looks like. And uh, many might not have, so some might not have uh, this for the, for example, the students who are joining us. And uh, this is how the the um, the screen looks like. You can see the machine in the center, and then you can see the dosing furnace. You can see the white ones are all the fences around the machine because safety is more important. There are a lot of moving parts, and uh, the molten aluminium is being dealt here. So uh, and then you can see the robo. You can see each and every peripheral. Uh, in one screen, and uh, you can also uh, see the status of this. And the highlight of this is whenever there is a error or a problem in a peripheral, uh, what uh, the operator right now does is he goes to that panel. He need to um, reset to the home button. And uh, for example, if the robo is uh, stopping in this way uh, at some point, which is not supposed to be, an alarm has been generated. And to restart the program, um, if, if the robo has to go back to its home position, then what happens? Uh, the operator has to go to the robo uh, panel, take the pendant in hand, and then he have to uh, follow the home position uh, program. But in Smart CMS, there is one home button for all the peripherals which are connected. So when you just press this home button, whichever the peripheral is uh, struck in between will go back to its home position so that uh, you can restart um, the operations uh, and go back to the, the auto mode in fractions. So this is the biggest uh, advantage right now with Smart CMS. And with Smart CMS, uh, you all know, you might have seen like uh, the Professor uh, Balamurli mentioned, like you must have uh, gone through a lot of uh, uh, webinars in the past on Industry 4.0. And uh, on the Foundry, uh, Industry 4.0 is like uh, when you have the, the material in, 
the ingot aluminium in and uh, when it's going back as a finished product the complete traceability has to be there inside the plant inside the foundry how it has been done a lot of companies have different way of doing it different softwares are doing it and uh, when it comes to the mission so the mission should be able to uh, align with this um, with this software or with this uh, system of uh, industry 4.0 and some call it as foundry 4.0 like it depends upon the the manufacturers of this software and the system so you can see from from here the material um, is um, inverted and then the stock has been entered in the system of uh, the alloy specifications and the weight for instance and then it goes to the melting furnace and then it's also like when it's consumed from the stock from the inventory it's automatically the system will know okay how much has been consumed from the stock and then the melting furnace will know okay i'm melting two tons of aluminium and i'll be supplying to the die casting machines or to the foundry machines and from there uh, we have the the foundry here like uh, the die casting machine um, some might have uh, separated the melting and the stores in a different plant and uh, they have the the machines in a different plant some might have in same plant so it all depends on the the movement and the the i would say uh, how big is the plant is if uh, the foundry is only with uh, three four machines then they may have uh, the melting and the uh, the ingot stock in the same plant itself and in die casting uh, smart cms uh, we can also have the complete uh, information in the cloud and then we have the the post treatment processes like uh, machining processes settling processes and then we have the quality check and then we have uh, the parts uh, in stock like with waiting for dispatch and this is how uh, the foundry 4.0 or the industry 4.0 in a foundry works and uh, related to the the machine and the interfaces so we always have a, a problem um, we had a problem in the past and uh, it's it's between uh, machines like i mentioned um, the machine suppliers have to work together to come into one platform one interface and uh, we call the interface as dual flux interface and then we have uh, to enter all the information into the cloud or into the erp system what the the foundry is operating for instance sap is an erp system and sap um, has to be aligned with this machine data so how this uh, this will be done is like uh, with smart cell management system you can have the the machine in the bottom you can see the these are all the machines and uh, the mission will be communicated uh, with all the data to the smart cms uh, through the beulah flux interface and uh, this will have all the data digital like it will be in the cloud or it will be in your server which can be viewed uh, from anywhere in the world through uh, all the smart devices and then from there you can also have the the, the interface to your erp system like how much is the stock consumed from the the melting furnace uh, from the molten um, from the ingot uh, how much is the working pro progress uh, wip or how much is the in stock finished product we can all uh, have the information um, in in one uh, one screen also and uh, the erp system will know each and every data and uh, if your uh, erp system is um, able to access or for instance you can also have um, for example the aluminium mine uh, god is uh, the minimum stock is uh, achieved or we have to order aluminium to the supplier what happens the the information will be passed from the the store from the stock to the erp system and the erp system will automatically generate a purchase order to the supplier so this can be like uh, without a manual intervention it it is possible and this eases the process it's it's like uh, a hassle free foundry is a dream for for everyone because foundry has lot of uh, difficulties in running 
and uh, a hassle free foundry uh, no stoppages no breakdowns uh, no quality issues and we have to work towards it and with that uh, uh, dream uh, we have to work together with with all the the system like i mentioned erp system like uh, the machine suppliers like um, the, the the cloud platform like uh, Bueller uh, has the the Bueller Insights. We we call it as the Bueller Insights. We work uh, with Azure, Microsoft Azure for the cloud platform. So we we are all uh, united. We are all collaborated to have uh, a single purpose: to have a hassle-free foundry, to have a white foundry, or to have um, a more productive foundry. So this is what uh, I mentioned. It's uh, Bueller Insights. Uh, we call it as the the Bueller uh, AI. Uh, it's a cloud platform uh, along with Azure, and uh, you can see here um, cell one, cell two, and uh, how many cells. These are the the diecasting cells, and you can have all the information of each and every diecasting machine cells to your server. Or through, uh, you can also have, uh, you can give an access to uh, Bueller uh, Cloud. Like if you are interested, if you can, um, if you uh, are interested to, um, uh, I would say there are some companies who have uh, uh, um, a confidential data. They don't want to share their company information to a cloud platform. Then they restrict that to uh, their servers alone. So in that case, uh, they will not share it to the cloud. But they will share it. Uh, the machine will share the information only to their servers. From their servers, they can access. Their employees can access through the smart devices. And if some companies, for for instance, there are some companies, uh, Bueller customers, they uh, have shared all the information, and they are ready to uh, work with us on the cloud platform. They give access of the machine to us, and then we take care of the the, the IOTs, and uh, we use our um, cloud platform to to have access of their cell their diecasting machine and also we have a, a platform called my Bueller, which we will see later on uh, it's about the customer service pro portal and this is what uh, a my Bueller, uh, portal is uh, my Bueller is a platform uh, like uh, each and every uh, customer will given uh, an access with the with the username and password they can directly go into their portal and they can view uh, the machines, what they have, how many machines are there in their plant, and which machine is in what status. And uh, these are also connected with uh, predictive analysis, downtime analysis, uh, dashboards. And uh, you can also have the, the maintenance schedule with MyBuller. You can have the trainings done in MyBuller for your um, employees, for, for um, the operators, for the maintenance team, and so on. You can order spare parts online, so you need not ask the quotation. Like this is also an advantage for for the the maintenance people as well as for the purchase department in any foundry. Like they have to spend a lot of time um, for for a manual. They they will have to just refer a manual for a part number, and then they have to uh, contact the the manufacturers to supply the part, and they will get the quotation. And after that, uh, the purchase department will negotiate. And after the negotiation, they will release the purchase order. And until then, the machine is down. So imagine if the machine is down for all these processes. The My Bueller platform will help in just by clicking. Uh, you, you will have a view of uh, a 3D uh, catalog. So you can go to your machine. You just select the part in the 3D catalog, which is, has to be replaced or which has to be ordered. You just click it, and then it's like uh, Amazon. Flipkart, like you go to, uh, uh, you search a product, and then you uh, just um, click it, say add to cart, and then you go for buying it by entering it. Here, uh, the same has been uh, implemented in uh, my Bueller for, for the die casting machine parts. You can go there, click the part, and then say order, and then uh, the system will automatically generate um, the put, uh, quotation. And then with that, if your purchase department is ready to proceed uh, with that uh, agreed price, so some as an agreement and um, to have uh, the, the discounts and so on, 
and um, some have uh, the delivery agreements, some have the, the transport agreements like uh, FOB, CIP and so on. So based on that agreement, the, the part will be shipped. So this can be um, easier for the, the foundry people, foundry men. And also you can have um, the e-service request, like you can say, okay, my machine is down, I need a service engineer. You can also enter in the, in the MyBuler platform, which machine is down and uh, what is the support needed. And uh, with MyBuler, these are the, the, the advantages, uh, the benefits for the customer. It's like um, the information, you will have all the information 24 by seven. You can identify the parts, like I mentioned, and you can also integrate with, with um, machine manufacturers for, for quotation and uh, for supply of the parts. And uh, predictive analytics, this is also a big topic and uh, uh, Bueller is working on it. Uh, it's like when a machine is down, it's, it's called a breakdown, unexpected downtime causes a lot of problem in, in um, the industry uh, with, with uh, just-in-time formula. Like many companies, many foundries, many OEMs, they don't want to sock. Uh, they don't want to have a huge inventory. So just-in-time plays a major role and in die casting as well. So we have to reduce the downtime as much as possible. So in that scenario, in that uh, view, what uh, the predictive analytics do does is like, um, if a part is going to fail, we will install a lot of sensors and um, um, systems around the machine where, where the parts are critical and uh, it's, it's a closed loop, a real time machine. And uh, the, the sensors will give a real time access, uh, real time information data to the system. And uh, the system will uh, predict, okay, this part is weakening, which means, uh, it has to be replaced so soon, maybe in a week or in two weeks. This information will be given to the maintenance team. And uh, whenever they do a planned activity, they can uh, get ready for the parts. Like the parts can be ordered meanwhile before the, the machine stops, before the machine breaks down. So this saves a lot of time. For instance, with predictive analytics, our assumption or our calculation we can save from 30 hours to almost um, almost zero hours, which means if a, if a machine is down for a part and uh, down for, for, a, for a service engineer, we have, uh, we have uh, promises to the customers like uh, we will attend a problem in 24 hours. And uh, uh, if you take that as 24 hours, the machine is down. If, if a machine has a breakdown and then we will have some um, problem solving time and then uh, we have some trial time and if a machine is down, there is a lot of pressure from and a lot of escalations. We can avoid all these with the predictive analytics. And uh, there is also a, a IoT um, product called as um, downtime analysis. It is like uh, you will have all the information from the machine like how much time the machine is running in auto mode with a with lot of intervention or with, with breakdowns, we can have all the information in the, in the screen and with a with lot of charts, pie charts and bar charts, you can have the comparisons. Okay, my machine is down and it was running only 40% with auto mode and we had a lot of interventions. And this can be analyzed in the Bueller Insights, Bueller Cloud Platform. And uh, with that information, you can go back to the machine and correct the problem. And we can educate the, the operators. We can educate the team to overcome these problems. Predictive analytics, uh, like I mentioned how it works. It's like uh, we have the, the cell and uh, we will install the sensors. We will have the, the incidents data. We will have the data from the, um, the peripherals and um, so on. And with that, uh, it will be analyzed in the Bueller Cloud. It will be first uh, inverted in the Bueller Cloud, and then we will analyze it. And then it will give uh, a solution. And with that, 
we will be able to overcome these problems we can have a planned activity to solve uh, the uh, to stop or to avoid the breakdowns and uh, artificial intelligence for instance um i've taken one example which is uh, a thermal um, management in die casting um, thermal management is uh, more important to have uh, a good quality product and uh, we need to know the the die temperature with that die temperature uh, we can get uh, a good product out of it and uh, die die temperature varies we have lot of uh, external uh, in uh, interventions like um, we can have uh, the cooling circuits from water or we can have a die temperature controller with hot oil passed in and uh, depending upon the thickness of the castings the castings are not uh, with the same thickness throughout there are a lot of variations in thickness likewise the the die uh, is not um, uniformly with the same temperature so we have lot of uh, points where the temperatures will be high where the temperatures will be low and we have to address this we have to uh, correct this before the next cycle so what happens uh, with the uh, artificial intelligence with the real time artificial intelligence the system will collect all the information with the thermal camera and um, the thermal camera will give the image of each and every critical points in the die and uh, it will give the temperature and uh, with that the the artificial intelligence work and it will change the flow of the the cooling water cooling or the oil uh, temperature monitoring temperature controller and uh, the sprayer sprayer also will be controlled uh, for the next cycle okay i need to reduce or i need to increase the spray time or the the volume we have lot of uh, such things uh, to be implemented and um, this we are, we are doing um, as a, as a trial process and it's uh, the the results are promising and uh, we are educating the customers to to um, to come up with such a for such a, a retrofits or such an option with the new machines so with this uh, what happens uh, the customer will have uh, a quality consistent uh, product uh, like whatever the environmental interventions are there will be overcome by the artificial intelligence and fleet management is um, is also important like for for a company who has uh, several plants uh, maybe within india or uh, anywhere in the uh, in the world like some companies uh, have uh, one plant in chennai one plant in pune one plant in delhi and they may also have some plants in europe or us and to have all the information um, we have uh, a fleet management platform where um, the the company um, can monitor the status of uh, the machines in each and every plant so they can go they can have all the data here and uh, for example if they have a plant in europe uh, that will be displayed here if a, if they have a plant in north america that will be displayed here and a plant in india and they can go directly click the plant Uh, click the country and click the plant, and then they will have in each plant how many machines are there. It will be displayed, and uh, the machine status will also be displayed, uh, like whether this machine is working, running perfect, or the machine is down. And if it is down, for what reason it is down? Like it could be a die uh, change, or it could be a, a breakdown, or machine related, or we can view all the information. When you click the machine, then you have all the information like this. so this is called as uh, the fleet management program we can monitor the the conditions of the machine and also uh, they can also plan uh, for the service activities uh, we have lot of customers um, um, like a vice president or the president who is responsible for all the plants uh, they can view the status of each and every plant each and every machine and what is the outcome and if there is a activity to be planned uh, a breakdown activity or uh, a maintenance activity like oems and uh, large foundries they will have their own preventive maintenance activities and this will also be shown here 
so that all the informations are in one platform and uh, with this it will uh, have a lot of uh, easiness in um, communications also like uh, the the president or the the management team doesn't want to uh, call pick the phone call the 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 manager in one plant what is the status what uh, why this machine is down and uh, status inquiries and to plan for their um, products and uh, volumes they can all do in uh, one one screen so this helps uh, the the industry the foundry uh, to to ease the operations and we have uh, a small video from uh, one of our customers i'll just um, um, share that video so that you can understand how the how the foundry with uh, digitalization or with um, um, industry 4.0 works let me just open the video start video At the GF Casting Solutions High Pressure Die Casting Foundry in Altenmarkt, we focus on fully digitized processes to optimize the entire value chain. We ensure the complete traceability for each component from the raw casting up to the ready to mount solution during the entire life cycle of the product. Relevant data for the production is collected, processed, and stored on a cloud solution. From all relevant key performance indicators up to the process data, the evaluation and visualization is performed in a business intelligence application. Trainings take place on a regular basis to ensure the transparency of the processes. At the master control station, data from the whole production process is collected and rated. It is crucial for monitoring and ensuring the process stability over the entire value chain of a product. With modern technology for the process monitoring, we ensure that the fully automated casting process in the die casting cell is able to constantly produce in the required quality. Thanks to the cloud storage technology, the process data is available wirelessly and in real time on all connected screens, also on the shop floor. With the intelligent robot handling, travel times can be reduced and big and complex components can be produced in minimal cycle times and in consistently high quality. After the component is taken out of the die casting machine and the gating and overflow systems are removed, the component goes through an embossing device and receives its individual data matrix code, in short, DMC. The DMC is the digital fingerprint of the component providing its traceability until it is handed over to the customer. By scanning the code, the process data can be accessed completely and retrospectively, being part of the constant advancement of the entire value chain. Intelligent logistics systems contribute to the stable serial production processes. Innovative automated guided vehicles ensure a safe and instantaneous material flow within the production site round the clock. The data matrix code is scanned in all following processes to ensure the right process sequence and a process interlock. The process steps after the casting and punching are, for example, the multi-level heat treatment, as well as the measuring of the components before the machining. The collected data about the process steps is linked to the DMC of the product and saved in databases. When the DMC is scanned in the machining department, the components can be machined automatically, like for example, milling, thread cutting, laser cutting. At the final assembly points, heli coils and additional parts are assembled, screwed or welded. After the different machining steps, the components are conveyed with automated guided vehicles to the next process steps. 
like conversion coding or e-coding. Here, the DMC is scanned once again to also include the coding process steps in the fingerprint of the product. This ensures the gapless process documentation. After the loading was completed, the components are delivered to the customers on time. Yeah, this is all from our side. Thank you all for listening. Sorry, Professor, uh, we are not able to hear you. Uh, sorry, I'm not able to hear you. No, we are not able to hear you yet, sir. Am I audible now? Yes. Yeah. Fine. Sorry, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, um, thank you, thank you very much for the wonderful and informative session. Um, uh, thanks to Mr. Kedar Vaidya and Mr. Dinesh Kumar from Buller. Um, it was, uh, you know, very informative and excellent uh, walkthrough for us in the diecasting industries as part of the Industry 4.0. So uh, as already I told you, you know. Uh, yeah, we have been come across a lot of I4.0 webinars and uh, you know uh, FTPs, and this is a new perspective and uh, you know new explanation in the diecasting industries. I, on behalf of Chennai Institute of Technology, and on my own behalf, I thank Mr. Kedar Vaidya and Mr. Dinesh Kumar for making this um, webinar a very informative and uh, you know uh, educative one for the all the participants. Thanks to all the participants also. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to have an interaction. I could see some questions here. Uh, do yes, we have we time? Have some, we have some questions. Uh, let me, shall we take up some questions? We have uh, around uh, 10 minutes. Sure, yeah, sure. 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 Sorry, we'll try I, to answer. I, since I was, uh, I don't, I will we'll take some questions like, you know, so basically, it's from students as well as faculty members. So the basic questions will be there. So what are the fields die casting cells are used? Can you please tell it? Uh, pardon? Can you please uh, repeat? Uh, what are the fields die casting cells are used? No, die casting cell is uh, a machine plus peripherals put together is called it as like a cell. It's like to manufacture aluminum or uh, magnesium castings, we need a machine as well as the peripherals. So uh, machine plus peripherals are called as a cell. OK. So another question is like, what sort of controllers and coding techniques adopted for smart CMS? Uh, we have uh, in smart CMS, we have uh, Siemens controller 
uh, Beulah Flex interface is more of um, a profi net, and uh, with the advancements, like with the with the latest technologies, and uh, Siemens controller will be used uh, in smart CMS to to control. It will be the master for all the mission as well as the peripherals. Okay, does these parts have ISO mark in it? ISO mark. Uh, I mean, we have uh, all the uh, products uh, with, with uh, the European standard, um, with safety standards, as well as with uh, the foundry standards. So it's it's all with uh, the European standard, CE certified. OK, another question is like, is there any disadvantage of Booler Flexi interface? No disadvantages. No, it's like uh, the flex interface will not work with all the peripherals. So like I mentioned in the presentation, we have discussed with uh, the peripherals manufacturers and uh, only few of the peripheral manufacturers has the present uh, technology what uh, Bueller has it. So whenever there is a, like for example, uh, you buy it now and in the future, you won't, if you want to change the peripheral. Like if you, are, you are using in the die casting process. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm I've not completed the the answer yet. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's it's like uh, if you have uh, if you bought uh, a smart CMS and uh, it's it's working fine, and uh, if you want to change the peripheral uh, to some other, uh, for example, uh, a local manufacturer, and that may not be uh, interfaced, or if that uh, peripheral manufacturer doesn't have. Uh, the supporting um, electronics in it, uh, then we will have a problem. So we need to uh, first check uh, whether that peripheral is supporting uh, our interface, and then we have to, uh, I would say, order that peripheral. So we'll go to the next question. Um, may know the cooling systems uh, you are using in die casting process. Cooling system, there are a lot of cooling systems. Like well, first is for uh, the oil temperature in the die casting machine. And we use uh, a plate heat exchanger. And then for the dyes, uh, we have uh, the water cooling. And then we also have die temperature controllers as a peripheral. So die temperature controller can either be oil based or water based. OK, so we will see. Hopefully, this question is from a student. Industry 4.0 will create jobs in manufacturing company. Yeah, maybe definitely. Mr. will answer. Yeah, 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 definitely. This will create jobs for the in the manufacturing industry. There is no doubt about it. See, in India, we, we still have uh, a laborous uh, jobs, and uh, those jobs might not continue if we go on for the full cell automation. But the guys who are in students in engineering colleges uh, definitely will have uh, more jobs here in the uh, with the smart CMS systems or even in uh, industry 4.0 concepts. The jobs will be still there. OK, OK, sir. The present so, problem in the foundry is there are a lot of uh, students and uh, the freshers I uh, I personally also see a uh, lot of uh, youngsters are willing to have uh, a white collar or a little bit of uh, technological job than uh, a dirty job. Foundry is a, a dirty business in the past. <coughs> and uh, a lot of people are having some hesitation in uh, starting a career in a foundry industry. To overcome that, uh, we, we have a lot of uh, innovations, like companies like uh, Bueller. We, we have a lot of uh, innovation innovative products to to overcome that uh, like the, the youngsters should come up with, to learn uh, the foundry technologies and they are also uh, like with the technologies what we have uh, a 21 inch uh, touch screen is the operator panel and uh, it's like a smartphone it's like your ipad and this will uh, give more um, boosting for the operators and angsters like okay we we work in a in a good environment they will have a feel okay we work in a good environment I, i'll add to it one more thing here we are also working on a concept of uh, white foundry 
which is uh, completely uh, tried to dust free environment with smart cms you will have very less uh, kind of uh, dirt and dust and uh, uh, that, uh, uh, coming into the shop floor so we are also finding out that people in europe are at least uh, encouraged to work in the foundries at younger ages and they still continue to work at a later stage fine sir that's all about the questions for today's session and thank you thanks once again to both mr kedar vidya and mr dinesh kumar and i am happy to say that in uh, our uh, company gokul auto tech we bought one uh, bowler die casting machine with uh, fully automatic industry 4.0 compliances also yeah with yeah. kuka robotics uh, operation and uh, many of our students are undergoing you know internship and learning the process of uh, um, die casting process in our company itself thank you thank you mr dinesh and thanks mr kedar uh, for the wonderful session and yeah. for accepting to be here thank, thank you, you thank you Thank you to all the participants and uh, have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you sir. Thank, Thank you everybody. Much. Have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And we have open uh, you can also write to us if you have uh, some uh, if you need some uh, clarifications or if you have some questions left out. We are there to support you. Sure sir. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.